that here. All right. How's everyone kids? Perfect. All right, my friends. So welcome, welcome. My name is Aaron. I'm going to be your guys' gold panning instructor. Now, I've been panning for a little bit now, about a year and a half, so I'm pretty good at finding gold. Uh, I have a good technique developed, and I want to share this technique with you. Now, in order to do that, I need you guys to give me your eyes and your ears. Maybe close the mouth a little bit. Best way we can pay attention is to really focus on what I'm saying, and then apply it a little bit later when you get a chance to try it. All right, with that being said, if you guys hold up your vials, you might be able to see three minerals that are inside of it. Starting with the lightest, going towards the heaviest, we have that purple gem in there. Can you guys see that purple one? Yeah. That is called garnet. It is the birthstone of the month of January. Now, it is a naturally occurring crystal that is in our river, and as it goes down, it's going to hit a rock, and it's going to smaller fraction of a larger piece. All right, there is another crystal in this vial. It is going to be that silver one. You guys see that metallic silver looking one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is known as iron pyrite. Now, iron pyrite has a nickname. Do you guys know this nickname? No. There it is, it's fool's gold. A lot of times people can confuse this crystal with real gold. Here is a picture of iron pyrite blown up just a little bit bigger so that you guys can actually see it. Oh, oh thank you, my friend. Here it is. Do you guys see those squares? This yeah. crystalline structure makes it fragile, so as it goes down the river, it's going to shatter as well, making it kind of rocky edged. Also, fool's gold iron pyrite has small traces of iron filings inside of it, giving it the ability to rust. Changing colors from this silver metallic to a more of a bronzy brown, yellow, sometimes even a gold color. And that's why they call it fool's gold. But this is not to be mistaken with that little itty bitty tiny yellow one in your vial. This is known as gold. This is real certified bona fide gold. Blown up, it looks like this, a little bit larger. As you can see, that gold is a lot more yellow, a lot more bright. It's smoother, it's flat. That's because it's a metal. Now, as a metal goes down the river and it hits a rock, do you think it'll shatter? No. No. This roof is a metal. If I was to take my fist and punch it as hard as I can, do you think it would shatter? No. No, it would just dent. Probably would hurt my fist, too. Now, the way that a metal uh, works in the river is that it only flattens and condenses. So the main difference between these two is going to be the shape as well as the size. So if you have an, a little piece of iron pyrite that's the exact same size as that gold and has a very similar color, you can look and see the smoothness of that gold is always going to be different from the rocky texture of that iron pyrite. Does that make sense to you guys? Mm -hmm. yes. All right. So remember, try not to touch the troughs because this is not might not be the trough that you guys are using. Uh, we're going to move on to our pans. But take a second. Let's take a step back from the troughs. You guys might notice there are pegs with two holes. What do you think those two holes are for? When you get to your own trough, these are your perfect vial holders so that you don't have to keep putting them in your pocket and getting your pocket wet. All right. So. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get started with our pans. Now, pans are lightweight plastic. They're, uh, compared to the uh, gold rush, they were large and metal. We are blessed with these three ridges. They help us keep the soil in our pan. If I was to get a similar size scoop, and I do one, and I do two, I do three, I can do four, I can do five, I can do a lot more. As you see, that soil rests upon each ridge, and it actually holds it in the pan. Now, fun fact, gold is about 19 times heavier than the water six times heavier than the soil. So, when that gold gets into your pan, and you get it down to the bottom by shaking it, you're gonna do three dips a little bit later in our uh, technique. And so as you do that first dip, that gold's gonna scrape against the bottom and hit that first ridge. You're gonna do that second dip, it's gonna jump over and hit that second ridge. You're gonna do that third dip, it's gonna scrape and hit that third ridge. Now, what happens if you do a fourth dip? It'll fall. It'll fall out, there's no fourth ridge to keep it in. So, how many dips are we doing today? Three. How many ridges Three. do we have? Three. There you go. You guys are ready. All right, so my first step is to get a big scoop. Now, is gold light or is it heavy? It's heavy. Heavy. Is it on the top or is it on the bottom of the pile? Bottom. Bottom. So, when you get a scoop, I want to hear you scraping that bottom, and I want you to get as big of a scoop as you can, almost overflowing that pan. Oh. Who has a better chance of finding gold, this or that? Yeah. That for sure, right? So get as much as you can, scrape the bottom. All right, how can I settle that gold to the bottom? I have maybe have some gold up here, maybe in the bottom, maybe in the middle, on the side. How can I get it all to the bottom? 
shake. Yeah, shake it up. <laughs> Set it in the water. The water helps loosen up the soils, and as we shake it back and forth, it's a process known as agitation. Now, as we agitate, we are allowing those heavy pieces of gold to go to the bottom and the rocks to the top. It's very similar to how we make butter. When we shake around and agitate that cream uh, or the milk, the heavy curds sink to the bottom and the cream rises to the top. Well, in this case, light pebbles are coming to the top and what's settling to the bottom? Gold. The gold. So, as you shake it, you're settling that gold to the bottom. Now, if I lost my ridges, take your finger, dig it onto the side. Look, there's my ridge. Always pinning over your ridge so we don't lose our gold. We're going to get rid of it at how many dips? Three. Three. Are we just going to throw it in there and rip it out? No. no. Nope. We're going to go very gently at a 45 degree angle. If I go up and down, does anything leave my pan? No. 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 If I go completely vertical like that, will anything leave my pan? No. Yes. No. Yeah. Everything will leave my pan. No. If I let go of my hand, this whole thing's going to slide off, right? Yeah. So we want to find something in between completely flat and completely up and down somewhere right around 45 degrees in the middle. Do you guys see what I mean by that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we're gonna go gently down. That's one all the way down, all the way up. That's one. Do you see how just that layer shaped off? All the way down, all the way up, that's two. Just that top layer with all those pebbles are sliding off. And three, all the way down, all the way up. Layer by layer, we're gonna get through this entire pile until what's left can be covered by my fist. Still a lot more to go. So I'm going to go ahead and agitate it up. Now when I'm agitating, I am listening for a good sound. Is this good enough? No. No, barely. What about that? Yeah. You guys yeah. hear those rocks scraping across? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not shaking it so crazy that everything's falling out. Just back and forth enough to hear the sound moving. Now in that agitation, my pebbles came to the surface. Getting rid of it in one. Getting rid of it in two. Getting rid of those pebbles in three. Now, as I'm agitating, do you think that I can agitate if there's no water in my pan? No. Huh? Yeah. Let's, let's, let's find out. Right? I'm pouring all the water out. No. Is anything really happening? No, it's just no. a big pile of mud, right? Yeah. When you add water, that's when everything can slip and slide past each other, and that's how the gold settles to the bottom. So always make sure you have a layer of water in your pan. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, three more dips. One, two, three. And once you get down past that third ridge, I'm going to do three more. One, two, three. I'm going to start noticing big rocks. Now, once you get past that third ridge, these big rocks are going to make themselves known. Are they going to help me find my little pieces of gold? No. Oh, so get rid of them. Always rinse them off in your pan. Dip, dip, inspect, toss them out. Dig through, get off those huge rocks, dip, dip, inspect, toss them out. Why won't I just want to grab a rock, throw it out? Because, because you have gold. gold in yes, you could be losing your gold. If you threw out your gold, that would be such a shame. Instead, you can easily just rinse it off, inspect it, and toss it. Do this until you get rid of all your big rocks, and what you should have left is a sand complex. Now, have you guys ever been to the beach before? Yes. yes. Have you seen the water wash up on the sand and carry it really quickly back down yeah. to the water? Mm -hmm. Well, same thing's going to happen here. Sand moves very quickly in water. So, we have to be a little more gentle. One, two, three. Shake, shake, shake. We're keeping on doing those agitations. We're going until we can cover the amount of soil with our fist. I'm almost in that area. I'm also looking for the sand to turn black. One, two, Three. Do you guys see that darker colored sand yeah, starting to be yeah. here? That darker colored sand is that bottom layer. That's going to be known as the payload. Magnetite. It's all the heavier metals. It's the iron. It's the iron. It's the magnesium. It's the bits of copper. Uh, it's very small traces of mercury. And what's the heaviest metal we're looking for? Gold. 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 And so, once you see that black sand, that's how you know it's, you're gonna find, it's your time to find the gold. All right, so do your last minute of removing those big pebbles because if you don't remove them now, you're just gonna have to remove them later. Make sure you dip them in your pan and then toss them out. All right. Awesome. So after you do that, you're going to shake them down. Is my gold up here? No. no. Is it over here? No. no. What about here? Because it, I mean, if it's in my pan, it's going to be right there, and it has to be. And because it's so heavy, it's going to be right here on the lowest point. So, in my next step, when I separate the water from the soil, 
Did my gold fall down into the water? No. 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 Where is it? In the sand. It's there. It's still in the sand. It's trapped on the very bottom. So just like how we did before, layer by layer, we're going to shave it off by swirling. If I start at a low angle, throw the water up and drag it down, that water will drag the sand down. So you're going to continue to swivel slowly. See how these rocks are starting to pile up? This yeah. is what I mean by getting rid of them earlier so they don't pile up in the end. Now, what's the name of that first gemstone that we talked about? Does anyone remember? Oh. Mm. Starts with a G, rhymes with Garnet. Garnet. Garnet! There you go. Garnet's going to be that first gem that we see. You guys see that big purple one right there? Yeah. That is the Garnet. That's how it's going to manifest itself garnet. in our can. Garnet. So anytime you see something like that, grab it. Put it to the side of your pan. Then, what you want to do is, after you make a pile, anything in your vial, you guys are allowed to keep, right? So these are your vials, you can take them home. So if you put all of the garnets that you find in your vial, you're more than welcome to take it home. And that's to go for the iron pyrites and the gold as well. All right, what's that next one we're going to start finding? Can anyone remember? Who's gold? Bull's gold! That's going to be these guys right here. Do you guys see that? Look how bright they are, those yeah. big shiny pieces of fool's gold. The ones gold. that just shine in the sun. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so when you find them, you're going to go ahead and put them out on the side as well. Remember, you can have as many as you can fit. All right, well, I found my fool's gold. I found my iron pyrite, but I haven't found any gold, and I'm kind of sad about that. Should I give up? No. 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 Well, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> just by swiveling that water around. Rocks out of the way. See that? Gold. As you swivel the water around, the gold doesn't move. Gold. That's it right there. Eureka! We found our gold. So, if you find gold, take it out of your pan. How are you gonna do that? Well, you're gonna take your finger and you're going to drag it up to the side. Just like that. Dry it off. Now, uh, if gold is very slippery when it's wet, is it a, a, are you gonna be able to pick it up with a wet finger? No. 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 Take your finger, dry it off with a dry finger. Yeah, that's all you gotta do, just give it a boop. It should transfer right to your finger. Now, is it a good idea to walk over here and maybe show your parents, or maybe show your friends over here? What happens if you drop it? <gasps> gold. What if you drop it? It's gone. Wah, wah, it's gone. Guess what, my dude? It's still on my finger. <laughs> <laughs> what happens if you drop it over the water? It's, it's gone. What if you drop it over your pan? It's still there. I mean, you can pull it out the same way that I just showed you. Drive your finger, give it a poke, and it's back. So always keep that finger over your pan, okay? With your free hand, grab your vial. It looks like I don't have a vial. Would someone like to volunteer their vial? Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Hold it by the glass. Take your thumb and just press it like you're flicking your coin or opening up a vial, just like oh, that. Whoa. Then, what you're gonna do, this is very important, I need you guys' eyes and ears this way. Cover the gold completely. Upside down, right side up. If I see you try to go eh or eh, I've seen someone try to wiggle it in on the side and it blew up and it fell right back in the water and they didn't get to keep it and it was really sad. So, in order to avoid that, cover it completely. Upside down, right side up. And then, if you have any iron pyrites, oops, or any garnets that you want to keep, do that same there. process. All right. And then after you find what you want to find, cover it back up, and then put it back in your thing. Thank you for volunteering your vial. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, afterwards, I found one piece of gold. Should I stop? No, should I give you up? Should keep going. Oh. You should keep going. Keep going. Look, there might be a little speck of gold in there. There might be big, oh, another see, other see, pieces of gold. I see in there. half of. Or off the bottom. Excuse me. Do I go straight to my three dips? No. no. What do I do? You sift it back and be more careful. Mm -hmm. Agitate it. There's one for you, and there's one for you. You guys are going to go into that trough over there. All right, go ahead and get a big scoop and get started. Yeah. All right, my four here. After we do my first big scoop, scraping off that bottom, we agitate that soil down. How many dips are we going to do? Three. Three. Excellent job. You guys go ahead and get started. Oh, I get the wet one here. You guys, you guys